For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A of the Thursday evening service of April 12, 1990, Passover weekend teaching and deliverance camp meeting at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Ombro kosoroto, ombro kosokora, ibrakasaka. I'm just saying what God's showing me here, brother. Ombro kosokora, brother. I'm just trying to figure out what God was trying to tell me. He just showed you me your very powerful arm, see? And you, you've got a powerful, strong anointing on you. And you had this, this weight. It's kind of like you, you weren't doing this, but it's kind of like, what do they call that, hand wrestling? He wasn't doing that, but it was sort of similar to that. He had this big weight, and he was trying to turn it like this, trying to move it. And that, this powerful man, that arm was twice, three times as big as yours. Big arm, and he's going like this. And he, that shows the struggle that's in you. And not flesh struggle, but that it's the, it's the anointing was the struggling, see. That anointing, that, that Holy Spirit that's working in you, that's interceding in you, it's, it almost becomes impossible sometimes. That, that, that travail type thing that comes on you. Do you understand what we're saying? And you're moving like this. You're trying to move that heavy weight. Trying to move that heavy weight. And I knew that he needed help. I knew that if he had some people to join him, that they would wing it over just like that. So what he's doing, he's travailing the body of Christ in to this new level. And as you join and intercede, as other body people join and intercede, then this thing is going to start turning. You're going to turn it. Turn it. Turn it. See, you doing this shows the leadership responsibility that God's put on you because you have a strong understanding of these things. You have a lot of light on these things, a lot of revelation on these things, and the burden is on your back. The pressure is on your back. So don't give it up. Don't let her down. Keep pressed in because people are going to start joining you worldwide. And that thing goes start turning. And that, that weight, that pressure is going to come off of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And we're going to break in. Yes, this hallelujah. New realm. In the name hallelujah. of Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. You have somebody mentioned Yes, sir. Uh, this little sweetheart in the peach with the white uh, you. Uh-huh. Well, I just saw you. You were in this, this field of beautiful flowers, uh, wildflowers. And you were sitting up on this uh, uh, rock and just thinking, you've been blessed. You've been blessed. All these flowers were blessings that the Lord has given you. And you don't quite know how to handle your situation. You don't know what you want, what you ought to be doing. I want to agree with you that the Lord's going to speak loud enough for you to hear. And you're going to turn up your hearing aid so you can hear God what the Lord wisdom. wants you, you to do. That, honey? God will give you wisdom. A lot of us sitting in the midst of our blessing, and we're all blessed, see. You may not think you're all that blessed, but you're blessed. And not quite knowing what to do. Well, join the crowd. I don't know all the time myself. But you see, you obey God the best you can, keep walking the best you can, and then more light comes. She's just agreeing here that you're going to start... Doing the best you can, you're going to come to that place where you're going to see the plan God has for you. You know how I pray like that? I say, God, your perfect plan be done in this situation. See, a person talked to me the other day, and it was a real, you know, in the natural, just in the flesh, is a pretty good deal. It, it really amounted to a person giving to our organization something like $150,000. Really, what it amounted to it wasn't cash. It was buildings and stuff like that. And, uh, well, you know how I prayed? I just said, God, only thing I want is what is best for you and this situation, best for that situation. I don't want it. I do want it. Whatever, whatever. See, don't make me a better difference. Whatever you want, God, is what I want. Amen. Now, that's the way you have to pray to get out of that mess. You still loving me? <laughs> then I want to talk to you. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Ombroko Soko. Ombroko Soko. Ombrokosoko. Now, Glenn, I don't understand this at all. I'm going to talk to you, and I believe as I talk to you, it'll come out. You know, when I get a, a, a word like this, I like for it to be something real neat. And, and I, you know, I like for it to at least give him, make it look like something. This didn't even look good. But I believe when I talk, it'll come out right. So, Brother Glenn, you were standing up here, and you had little flags. You'd stick this one up, and then you'd stick this one up, and you'd stick this one up. And none of them was all that hot. See, just little flags. Just little flags, and you're doing them all. Brother, I want to tell you something, what God's saying by that. That's what you've been doing for the last, how many long you've been here? Fourteen years in this camp. He's been putting flags. Flags represent liberty. Liberty. See, each one of these meetings, people are p- carrying these little flags home. See, these were little flags, not big flags, see. You're carrying them, and you're giving these flags out to people that come here. Liberty is what it is. Spirit of liberty is coming on you when you come to this camp. Are you hearing me? Now, the spirit of liberty is coming on you in this camp. Now, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like all that much. See, that's the point, Glenn. It doesn't look like you're really setting the world on fire. But each one of these, and then I knew that the time was coming when it would no longer be just these little ones. There would be a giant flag brought out here represents the full anointing of God. So these camps, these camps is what I've just been picking up tidbits. They've been outstanding, right? Been outstanding. But the time is coming. When we will not have just a little liberty, a little liberty. You have, thank God for that little liberty. Yes, amen. amen. But we're going to have divine explosions. Explosions that will be heard around the world. That's the hour that we're coming to as far as the nation's concerned, but as far as this camp's concerned. Praise you, Jesus. told me that last week. We'll go for that. Praise God. <laughs> That these little flags, praise God for them. Amen. These little Amen. freedoms, little liberties we're getting. And we take them home and live them. But brother, we're coming to the place where that divine explosion is going to bring forth the full liberty of God in these meetings. Thank God, thank God. You see, you see, a lot of churches are sweethearts. I go to these churches. They're sweethearts. They, pastors love God. But I want to tell you something now. We get deceived and we don't know what's going on. And, and places like this can be a wonderful place to get fed and, and blessed. And, 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 and some churches just won't let it happen. I mean, good charismatic churches. In their ignorance and stupidity won't let it happen. Amen. Don't even know any better. Don't even know they're blocking God. Man, I missed the whole Pentecostal move by stupidity. <laughs> I'd say, God, where are you? You know, I'd hear that little voice about the Pentecost. I said, I wish that was true. Everybody told me that was a bunch of lies. <laughs> Missed the whole thing. I mean, back in the 40s, I was preaching. John 14, 12, He that believeth on me, I mean, Baptist, He that believeth on me, the works that I do. I said, if you get a hold of God, you'd tear this church down. You couldn't build a big enough one to keep people out. You see, there'd be so many people. He said, I believed all that stuff. But Pentecostals had it moving, and I didn't know anything about it. That means a lot of charismatic is going to miss God in this hour, this stupidity. But see, this is a place where when churches aren't moving in the power of God, you can come and get fire of God. Amen. Praise um, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Looks like we're getting the leaders here tonight. Go ahead, Mother. Pick up the, somebody This else. little sweetheart in the blue skirt right on the end there. You know, uh-huh. You've seen these uh, two-wheel, one-horse carts that they use for, for uh, peddlers use in uh, foreign countries. You've seen pictures of them. And the, your cart was all painted up nice and bright and clean and looked good. And you were just carrying, taking things to, to people, going from, from place to place, giving people your wares, telling people about Jesus. And it, it was a pleasure to see that type of, of vehicle. It wasn't one that was run down and just you, you didn't want to get anything off of it. It was there. It was, it was lovely. That's your life. Oh, la, la, taria. Monday kill out. Brother, Praise that you, black Jesus. brother back there, are you a preacher? Are you a pastor? Well, well, come on down here. You're a preacher, but not a pastor. <laughs> Do you preach a lot? Quite a bit. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't, he a, isn't he a nice guy? Praise God. Praise God. Let me hug your neck, brother. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I prakasata rabakasata rabakasakaya. Ombroko socorra. Ombroko socorra. 
Oh, Jesus. I break that discouraging spirit that gets on you. You hear me? I break that failure spirit that's been dominating you and destroying you and, and causing you to be broken in heart and, and discouraged and, and tempted to just back away and say, isn't there more? And how do I get out of this? I break that. I release you from that and I send you into a new dimension where you'll see the power and the fire of God upon you. Jesus. You foul torment. You torment. It's been tormenting this brother. I break your power. I break your power. I break your power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Brother, you know, the second thing I saw there in the Spirit, I just, when I say in the Spirit, I could miss God. See, it's what I feel like was the Spirit. See, Hallelujah. I just saw these. It's just like a bunch of, I call them torments. See, just like bees or something. This one does bite you and sting you. See, it's right in a harness that's all mess. See, not God. just one or two, but all the time. You understand God. that? Amen. Got and it. you just know you're coming through. Yeah. Then the next thing I saw, you're going to have to do a lot of praying to God. A lot of really soul searching, coming, getting, you know, this like we preach tonight. Yes, Lord. And you're going to see some things break in your ministry. Hallelujah. Okay? Praise now, Hallelujah. one thing about obedience, you don't get out of the mess quick. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. The Israel, Glory. thank you, brother. Thank Israel you. repented slowly. <laughs> Seventy years it took them to repent. Yeah. And you and I repent slowly because we don't know what full repentance is. I repent a little bit at the time. See, that's what you said tonight. You know, I'll finally teach you. Yeah. But you say, I said, Lord, I want to be like Jesus. But boy, if I really knew what that meant, mm -mm. <laughs> forget it, Lord. <laughs> so step at a time, you come in. Oh, da, da, da. Say it. We're coming in. We're coming in. Get to the fullness of Jesus. We're coming in. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I don't pray. The, oh, it's it, your turn, Mother. The, this little sweetheart with, with the fruit basket. On... <laughs> You know, the, I, I just saw you. You've, you've got a load. I don't know what it is, but I saw this, this harness going over your shoulders back to a load. You've got a load that you're carrying. And I want to agree with you. You're going to have the strength and the ability to carry that load as long as it has to be carried. The time may come when you don't have to carry it, but you've got the strength and ability to carry it. You understand that, sis? God says you can handle it. Get in there and kick and go, kid. <laughs> All right? Ibroko, Mrakaya, my brother here. Libor, yeah. what's your name? Uh, Gene Moody. Gene Moody. Isn't he a nice guy? I tell you what, everybody you lined up here just seems so sweet, Glenn. I mean, this seems like they're just beautiful people. We just love you so much. Appreciate your spirit. Oh, Jesus. Ibroko, Jesus. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Now, brother, here's what I see in my spirit that I feel like God's saying to you. There is a ministry in you that wants to share everything to everybody. There is a heart that's just open to everybody. You understand what I'm saying? Does this bear witness with what I'm, what I'm, you know, is that his basic nature? Now, he had his arm loaded with, with baskets of blessings, see. And he just, he don't really, it doesn't bother him too much who he gives them to. He just gives them. I mean, he is so free with his, you know, he don't really, well, you're not quite not here. See, he's full of Jesus and wants to give deliverance, whatever it is, the word of the Lord. Or even help sometimes. He finances oh, help sometimes. There's such a giving spirit in this brother. Jesus, that is the nature of Jesus. He came to give. He came to serve. See, this is a basic principle of holiness. Came to serve. He came to give. Oh, there's such a blessing on giving. Can't you see that in his face? <laughs> that glory anointing, that simplicity of Jesus. It's not a, it's not a religious spirit. Bless God, look at me. I'm pretty good. Oh, Jesus. See, it's a real sweet Jesus spirit. 
Bronde Estacara. Umbroco Sora. Now, brother, another thing that you are, you're a watchman in Israel. See, we're talking about the body of Christ is Israel. You are a watchman. And you haven't been just a watchman. Uh, I mean, you've been a watchman. You, I see you climbing up to the tower. And you're looking like this. See, you're looking off. And you've got a message to warn the people. You follow me? Yes, sir. God has given you a message. A watchman's message is in your heart. And you burning inside to warn God's people. You understand that? Yes, sir. God love you, brother. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise God. Lord. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. We call these love words. We just encourage the body. Now, the Praise prophet here will really clean your plow. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. I'm ready to sit down, but you got, I got one. I got one more. All right. Mary, I, j I just saw the Lord just washing your feet. Just pray. Just know that he loves you, and you're somebody special to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, Glenn. Thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. Oh, sing Jerusalem, the Lord will lead his army to victory over forces that would harm thee. Oh, sing the wondrous story to the nations of his glory. Oh, sing, oh, sing Jerusalem. thank you for your presence this evening. We thank you for the Word. We thank you for rest tonight. We thank you, Lord, for raising us up tomorrow to glorify your Son, Jesus. Amen. Our Lord God, Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by Thy great power. Our Lord God,
presence of the Lord here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands back up and let's praise Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We believe He's going to do good things among us. We believe you're going to do good things among us, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you. For tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thursday evening, first service of the Passover weekend of April the 12th, 1990, being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Bob Boose and Jack Harris are the speakers of the evening. Should Well, it's a privilege to have everybody here and everybody to enter in in praise and worship, magnifying the Lord Jesus. Amen. And it's just a joy to be able to depend on Gene and Earlene and Brother Jack Harris to, and Linda to come and help us in these meetings and then others that the Lord sends along to help in the meetings as well. And it's a 
we're just glad for Brother Jack Harris from Beckville, Texas, who ministers almost every camp meeting, or at least he comes and supports us and uh, gives us advice, and he's part of our right-hand arm here, and we appreciate him. Brother Jack, come and bring the word of the Lord for a little while here. Blessed be the Lord. Thank the Lord. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Ah. Well, I stand here tonight in pursuit of a blessed hope. You ask me what my hope is, and I'll tell you. Praise the Lord. I, I have had a blessed hope for a long time. I, I came to the Lord about 40 years ago uh, in the, in the old line Pentecostal uh, groups. And uh, for the next 15 years, I had a blessed hope. I, you know what it was? I hoped that I would die and go to heaven. <laughs> well, that's a good hope. It, it, was, it really did me good. I, I lived with that hope for a long time. But one day, I discovered a better hope. And now... I no longer hope that I'll die and go to heaven. I hope that I'll live and reign with Christ. Hallelujah. And that is a more blessed hope. Hallelujah. And the Lord would say unto you that you are a real people in a real warfare against a real enemy over a real truth. And if you apprehend that truth, it will make you free, saith the Lord. Yea, draw nigh unto me tonight, and I'll draw nigh unto you. Yea, deep will call unto deep, and you will know of a truth that you've been touched by the hand of the Almighty. Yea, you'll feel that stirring deep within your spirit, and from the depth of the throne of the Almighty will have come the word and the anointing into your spirit. And you, my friend, will never be the same again, saith the Lord. Yea, uh, because the Lord uh, shall apprehend thee for a purpose, yea, uh, and he shall uh, destine thee. You are a destined people, saith the Lord, for know that it has pleased the Father. Father, to bring many sons to glory, yea, and each one of them will be just like uh, the only begotten Son of God, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, I shall plant the logos, yea, deep in your spirit, and it shall uh, bring forth, yea, that that is mighty, that that is, uh, uh, that that is active, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, and you shall not remain the same day after day, week after week, and month after month, but yea, a growth shall surely take place in the inner man, saith the Lord thou God. You shall find that you are uh, being uh, conformed into his image and into his likeness, yea. Uh, you shall find uh, that the old man is diminishing, yea, and the new man uh, is taking dominion. And this will be a good sign and a good life, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, for I have purposed this uh, for the sons of God. God. Have you not read, yea, that the whole creation uh, standeth on tiptoe and waiteth anxiously for the manifestation of the sons of God? I tell you now, saith the Lord, uh, that it is a day of revelation. It is a day when the Lord thou God uh, is revealing his nature, his very life, uh, to his elect, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, and the fullness of that revelation will come uh, when the Lord shall unveil uh, the manifold uh, blessings sons of God. Yea, I uh, for know that there is much pollution in the land. Yea, there is much pollution uh, in Christianity. Uh, yea, but the Lord thou God is right now. Yea, even this minute uh, and every minute uh, he is making a company of people. Yea, uh, that will eradicate all uh, of the uh, influence that the enemy, yea, has left in the world, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, I shall call 
breathe for it, uh, to be a people uh, that waits in expectancy to occupy a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, uh, saith the Lord thou God. For you are my people, and I am jealous over thee, uh, saith the Lord thou God. I shall keep thee in the palm of my hand, and there is no power in earth, yea, nor under the earth, yea, or nor any other a locale uh, that shall be able to pluck you out of my hand, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, walk with me, and I shall walk with thee, saith the Lord. Yea, and we shall walk as one. Yea, and you shall think as I think. You shall have the mind of Christ. Yea, and I shall make you a mighty people, for I shall turn unto thee the kingdom. Yea, and thou shalt be victorious, uh, saith the Lord thou God. Uh, it is not a day of defeat, but it is a day of victory. It is not a day of turning back, but it is a day uh, to be in hot pursuit, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, if I have called thee uh, unto a work and unto a walk, yea, and I shall surely bless thee as thou dost obey uh, even the word of the Lord, uh, saith God. Yea, for you are my people. Yea, and I am your God. And I am not ashamed uh, to be identified as such. Ye shall not be ashamed to be identified as such either, saith the Lord thou God. Uh, for uh, you are a special people. Yea, and I shall pour out uh, the choicest blessings from heaven uh, for thee, saith the Lord. Yea, it is not by chance that you have come this way, yea, that you have entered in. I tell you now, uh, saith the Lord, I would have you to draw near unto me in a tight circle, uh, spiritually speaking, that is, saith the Lord, thou God, yea, uh, that I might pour out on thee and in thee, yea, the knowledge of the Most High, yea, that thy ears uh, will hear, yea, and thy heart will be enlightened, and thou shalt know that you're in the realm of the Shekinah glory of the presence of the Almighty, yea, for God has ordained, and it shall be so. If God be for us, who is he that can be against us? If he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, and is even now seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or Apparel, our sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I tell you, I will teach you until you have learned, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, I shall teach you until you have learned uh, not just the truth, but the whole truth, uh, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, for thou shalt learn, uh, as it were, to rightly divide the word of truth. Yea, and thou shalt know uh, to accept the good and to reject the evil, saith the Lord thou God. For I shall bring maturity to thee, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to give him a praise offering. Hallelujah. 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 I think that the whole thing is about let's grow up in him, in, in him who is the head of all things. I told you that I came in uh, to the Lord about 40 years back, and, and uh, we came through the old uh, school of Pentecost, and, and we had, uh, they used to have the great testimony services. Any of you familiar with the great testimony services? And we had uh, this, uh, this one uh, elder, a deacon, I believe he was, and uh, he'd, uh, he'd, he, had, he felt he must testify in every service, uh, and so he would always say, Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Well, I was just a child when I first heard him say that, and I kept hearing him say it till I got grown and, and until I came uh, to the Lord. And, um, and so uh, when I came to the Lord, I remembered that, that this brother said, Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So, 
uh, you know, I got saved, and I thought, well, everything's going to be all right now, you know, and uh, my troubles are over. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and sure enough, it was for about two or three days pretty uh, fair sailing, but then, uh, then comes the pinch. <laughs> and and I, I was confronted by what I felt like was, was the devil. And so I remembered what Brother said. He said, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So I resisted him, and he almost eat me up. Now, so I was, you know, this, this troubled me. And, I, and I, so I went back to the brother, and I said, hey, how about this, resist the devil business, and he'll flee from you. Uh, he just about eat me up. Well, he said, Brother Jackson, you, you hadn't got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. And then, so I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and then comes the same cycle. And again, <laughs> again, um, it, the, the wrong one had to flee. And this disturbed me, sure enough. Because now I got, you know, I got the baptism on. And, and then I read it. I never had read it. I just heard him say it. He was just, he was, it was good, but he was just giving me a half truth. <laughs> and I read the other half. <laughs> and it says, resist, uh, it says, submit to God. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Then resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. It'll work that way, but it don't work the other way. I'll tell you, <laughs> these, these half-truths will kill you. <laughs> you know, in a court of law, they always make you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And, and they're not for all of their lives going to let you tell the whole truth. And they know it. But, but we're not in a court of law. Uh, this, is, this is God's government. Now, uh, these half-truths will, will kill you. But the whole truth will make you free. Now... Uh, you see, it goes like this. For when I learned to submit to God and resist the devil, you see what was happening there. In the, uh, at first, it was just me against him. Well, anybody would know that's no uh, match. I mean, <laughs> but I don't know what the odds would be here. Uh, b believe me, nobody would take any bets on me if it's just me against him. But when I submit to God... And then I stand up to resist him. It's not just him against Harris. It's him against the whole church. All of us. You know, it's kind of like this. If I went down into town here and run a traffic light or something, and, and a policeman pulls me over, and, uh, and he's, you know, he's a little guy. He might even be one of them meter maids now. I don't know. But anyway... And I feel like, well, shoot, I could, you know, I could just settle this right here with him. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I might could, except for something else is going to happen. Because as soon as somebody sees me begin to try to settle it with him, they're going to ring the phone. And the first thing you know, there's going to be a whole uh, squad of policemen there. If they need to, they'll get everyone in hot springs. And then if that's not enough, they'll call out, they'll appeal to the whole county. And if that's not enough, they'll call in the highway patrol, the state. And if that ain't enough, they'll call in the National Guard. What I'm saying is I can't win. Because uh, I'm bucking too much of a, <laughs> amen, I'm bucking too much order here. There's too many ties here. Now, that's a, that's a position that the devil is in. When we submit to him, uh, to God, and resist him, we, we've called in the whole National Guard. And, and he has to run. That's, all, that's, the only, that's the only option he has now. He's got to go. Now, I learned, I learned a little bit about <laughs> divine order and, and divine government over the years and, and, um, and what makes, you know... What really moves the hand of God, and uh, I, I, I've learned you know, uh, a lot more than a new start with. Put it that way. <laughs> oh yeah, amen. And um, and I've got a lot more to learn because I have not apprehended that for which I was apprehended for. Uh, but I'm in pursuit. I, I'm I'm not looking back. I'm looking forward, and I'm pressing toward. That blessed Mark. There's a people 
just over the horizon. They're in the land now. Hallelujah. Amen. That's going to do the greater works. Somebody said, when are we going to do the greater works? Well, don't worry about the greater works till we do the... <laughs> we got to do the first works. We haven't done the, the, the ones that he did. He said, these works that I do shall you do in greater. But we haven't done the ones that he done yet. Somebody said, you know, I, I, I said, well, I practice raising people from the dead. I preached uh, over 700 funerals. <laughs> and, and most of them, I have sometime during the time, went in and practiced raising them from the dead. So far, yeah, uh, I'm batting zero. Somebody said, <laughs> I was telling this, and one brother said, Brother Jackson, think what would have happened down there at town if, 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 if they would have, if you would have raised the dead. And I said, you know, that ain't what I was thinking about, what had happened downtown now that I've thought about it. What I'm worried about is what happened to Jack Harris. <laughs> you know what would happen to Jack Harris? His ego would blow him away. That's right. He couldn't stand it. Uh, um, he, he couldn't stand that kind of glory, that kind of praise, and the kind of, of adoration the people would, would pour upon him. I think that fact has been proven sufficient in, this, uh, in the decade of the 80s, don't you? Uh, that men just can't stand the great. <laughs> Amen. They just can't stand to get too lofty. Their ego will blow them out. Of the, it blows them away. Hallelujah. Now, we've got to get rid of all of that before we move into what I see and uh, uh, where I, I hope I'm going. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope I am. Praise the Lord. Well, now I may be sharing some with you uh, during the convention here, and, and uh, I'll share some thoughts with you. Uh, I don't know. I haven't heard my brother preach, except I did hear him preach funeral. <laughs> I didn't know if he tried to raise the dead or not. Don't hurt nothing. Try. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, but, well, thank the Lord. You know, he said, well, he said that we'd do these great things, and, and we will. Uh, we just hadn't got around to, <laughs> to all the greatness yet. I think the Apostle Paul walked into his study one day and looked in his files here, and he's shipwrecked and floated on a board two weeks here, he says, and forsaken by all my countrymen uh, in dire need of you know, uh, naked and hungry and then he glanced over here and seen another uh, title and he looked at this and he said oh well I reckon the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us Hallelujah. Uh, all the sufferings there are is nothing. There is a glory to be unveiled in a people. Hallelujah. In a people that are being fashioned like Him. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. The wilderness and solitary places shall be glad for them. The desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with singing, and the glory of Lebanon shall be given to them, and the excellency of Carmel and of Sharon. And they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands, confirm the feeble knees, and say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, our God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense. Our God will come and save us. Then shall the blind eyes be opened, and the deaf ears unstopped. The lame man shall leap his heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. And in the wilderness uh, shall waters break forth, and springs in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. And in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be there and a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. 
And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sadness and sorrow shall flee away. Praise the Lord. Let's praise Him again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Jack. And it's a privilege to have Brother and Sister Booth with us for this time. And it's been a day or two since we've seen them. We used to see them quite often in the days past. We're glad to have them back and visit with us for this weekend and teach us from the Word of the Lord. Brother Bob, come and take your liberty here to teach what the Lord's given you this evening. Do I have any fire? Okay. Well, we're excited about you, the body of Christ. And we're excited about Jesus Christ who is in you. Okay? We have had a good time so far. I appreciate Brother Jack getting up here and just flowing in the Holy Ghost, didn't you? Now, tonight we're just going to hang loose in Jesus and bring you something. Okay? You know, the, Brother Glenn was talking about praying a while ago. You know, for the last seven years, we've been praying diligently for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit to come on the entire body of Christ. I'm talking about the ones that will submit. Not everybody's going to submit. There's a bunch of devils in the body of Christ. <laughs> None of them here. Praise God, praise God. <laughs> but uh, we're just praying for a mighty outpouring. We're, the deserts, Brother Jack, you was talking about. All the, you know, I'm a desert land myself. I mean, I, compared to Jesus, I'm pretty much a desert. Are you all out there? Uh, you know, that desert, I'm, I always apply that to me. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm thinking of God in all His fullness. And I'm thinking of Jesus. And, and as He is, so am I in this world. I'm thinking of that ministry, the works that He did, I'm to do, and greater works than these. Da-da-da! Shall I do? Because I believe. All right? But you see, uh, I'm still a desert compared to the actual thing. That's just... That's just truth that's not come alive yet in any of us. You understand that? There will be a people that will walk in this glory. The, not very far off either. Not very far off. There will be a lot of, a lot of burning, though, before you get there. <laughs> have to skin that old ornery hide off of you. Praise God, praise God. See, you couldn't have preached uh, the messages that you'll be hearing in this camp meeting, couldn't have preached them ten years ago. God's people wouldn't receive them. Right. All they wanted was super hot faith. God was in that. Don't misunderstand. But, but if God would raise up a message every once in a while, most of them would reject it. Are you all hearing me? Yeah. But this is God's hour. Amen. It's a time for God's bringing forth holiness. Amen. There's got to be a mature people. Amen. got to be a strong people who know their God. The people that know their God shall be strong. That's talking about this very time, Daniel eleven thirty two. People that know their God shall be strong, and they what? Shall do exploits. That's the, that's the order of the day. The mighty miracle power of God. Been praying a lot for the Arab countries. Mighty move of God throughout all the Arab countries, throughout all the Orient, throughout all of Africa, all of Europe. Glory to God. I destroy communism. I destroy socialism. I destroy corruption. Amen. And you know, Jesus is going to come back, and we're going to get rid of all of it pretty quick. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in the wind-up group. Y'all listening to me? We're in the wind-up group. Brother, we're about to see the mighty hand of God sweep across the nations. It'll be in the midst of judgment, but it'll also be in the midst of the fire of God. Glory, 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 glory. Now, tonight, I'll let you pick the message. We can preach on discerning uh, the voice of God. We can preach on uh, uh, obedience. That'll skin you good. <laughs> or we can preach on a vision of your kingdom. Oh, that'd be three good enough, I think. 
Uh, which one shall I preach? Obedience. See, that's absolutely right. <laughs> Who said that? See, that's absolutely right. That's what I studied on, and uh, I think that's right, brother. So we'll give you credit for getting the right one for me. <laughs> praise God, praise God. Got the wrong book, though. I've just got some verses here that Lily and I have been praying in our morning prayer group, in our prayer meetings. This is my prayer book here, by the way. And so, I have some on obedience. And I preached this the last church I was in. First time I, I guess, I may have mentioned this, uh, uh, preached it maybe 15, 20 years ago, but it wasn't like this. Okay? But the last meeting was in. It was last week we preached this. And never had preached it before like that. I never, never used these scriptures because I just got them together. So they're going to be good. God's Word is always good. Come up here, Sister Little, and bring one of those mics and uh, read these scriptures for me. I was having Little and read the scriptures one time, and we was on the video. And uh, I just say, Honey, read these scriptures for me. And then the Bob Tilton's group, and he sent those things all over to these, all these churches. <laughs> and so they thought I couldn't read. <laughs> I don't know. Can, can you? I'm the one that taught her how to read. <laughs> praise God, praise oh, God, praise Lord. God. Praise God. The Bible says we prophesy, that, that we prophesy in part. Amen. And the Bible is prophecy. Did you know that? Amen. And so the Bible is in part. In fact, sometimes we just get the small part. And God will be talking over here and it'll be a part, see? And part of that will belong to you and part of it belongs to somebody way down there. Isn't that a mess? Boy, you've got to be a man that's on fire for God to understand the Word of God. Are you listening to me? You're going to have to learn to rightly divide the Word. Every time you hear a message, it's in part. Very little part. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You uh, don't know the whole truth. And uh, just like Brother Jack said, if God ever showed it to you, your head would get too big. So you just get a little dab will do you sometimes. And so what I preach tonight is true up to a point. Somebody else come along with a little more knowledge, he'll give you a little bit more on it, see? Same way with the gifts of the Spirit. Get 50 guys up there and all teach on the gifts of the Spirit and it'll all be different and it'll all be right. At least parts of them would be right. Most, well, of, them, most of them would have some error in them. And the thing about it, the Lord doesn't say He's going to keep His people from error. But he gives you the opportunity to hear it, and then you have to have enough smarts to discern which is which. Now, Brother Jack, did you notice in the Old Testament, and it hasn't changed in the New, they, they'd send those, these people would be standing there, and, and here'd come this dumb false prophet, and he'd prophesy all this junk, and here'd come another false prophet, and here'd come another. And then, they, then every once in a while, he'd come one of those Holy Ghost men. Yeah. He'd shoot the word at him, yeah. and they'd sit there and cuss him out. Isn't that amazing? They, like that. They, they could accept the fault, but couldn't. Listen, you better learn to discern the faults, because he's going to be around. Amen. You're going to be hearing him, oh, yeah. and he's going to sound good. And, and the, it'll guy, the guy will be a good guy. I mean, you know, talk to him, pretty nice guy. But he's, he's operating in deception. Yeah. Right. Now, how can I keep from being a false prophet? First of all, I've got to be honest. See, I can't get up here and, bless God, I'm going to show off a little bit. That's stupidity. Uh-uh. I've got to be absolutely honest. I can't get up here and try to prove something to you. Bless God, i got a point and I'm going to prove it to you. I'll show you every scripture on eternal security. Or what about every scripture on falling from grace? Make a difference. Both of them's got some truth in them. Are you there? You see, some of you <laughs> ready to fight already. No, no. What's the difference? What's the difference? Whatever's right is what I want. Amen. So you quit being married to your dumb ideas. Amen. You quit trying to prove your dumb ideas. Amen. You're going to rip the Bible apart and not have anything when you're through. You just let her talk to you. Let her chew you out. Let God's Word just flat eat your doctrine up. Yes. Don't have any doctrine. Yes. I was reading a bunch of scriptures on the end time to a little Pentecostal group one time was a charismatic group, the little Pentecostal lady in there. And those charismatics, they just listened to it. This little Pentecostal lady, she said, but, 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 <laughs> but, but. All I was doing was reading scriptures. I wasn't even commenting hardly. 
But, but, <laughs> but, what she didn't like was they didn't follow her pattern. That's right. She had it all figured out. She knew exactly how the Lord was going to come back. Now, sweethearts, if you're going to live in this end time, you better take the butts out <laughs> and say, okay, Lord. So you don't want to come up to God and tell Him, all right, God, I'm ready to be blessed, and you bless me like I want to be blessed. <laughs> oh, once in a while I do that. <laughs> I really get anxious on discerning the voice of God. Lord, do it now. Do it now. I don't have a whole lot more time. <laughs> Praise God, praise God. We're going to talk about obedience now. Exodus 19.5. Obedience brings God's smile. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession, although the whole earth is mine. Now, did that ever happen for Israel? Sure it did. To a point. <laughs> it happened for a while, didn't it? They didn't hold it very long, did they? Is this truth for us, too? Amen. Is this nugget for us? Amen. All right. So this says here, honey, if, if we obey God and fully, see, and you, you, this isn't just a little dabble, do you here, see? This is complete surrender, isn't it? And keep His covenant. Yeah. Then, out of all nations, you're going to be super hot people, a, pe a treasured possession. Just... You hear that? He says, all the earth is his, but even though all the earth is his, you're going to be something extra special. God says, if you will obey me, that law, somebody said something about Jesus is the same yesterday and forever. Amen. Well, that law will never change. If you will obey me fully, Amen. come on, say it, fully, fully, then you will be a treasured people. Above all people Amen. of the earth. Now, that's the people, Brother Jack, you're talking about. Amen. This is the people that God is bringing in. This is, the, this is the group that God's calling forth. See, we are really the spiritual Israel anyway. Amen. We are the Israel of God. Now, don't mess up your doctrines. I don't care what God does with the nation of Israel. That's obvious. He's doing something and will do something. But don't get all hooked up on that. Let's deal with the real Israel of God right now. Amen. And I am the Israel of God. And Abraham's blessings are mine. And if I will obey him fully, then I will be a treasured yes, people amen. above all people amen. upon the earth. And what makes me disgusted is that you keep messing me up. <laughs> uh, what, what are you saying? We're not any of us going to get very far without the rest of us. See, it's what Brother Jack said a while ago. We're the body of Christ, see? And the, we're all one. And when Satan faces you in Jesus, he's facing the body of Christ. But for you're a bunch of dogs, then I'm kind of doggy. <laughs> Did you ever notice when this thing breaks? Back there in your day, you was in that great move. That thing was open, man. And the Pentecostal people, they, they had some doggy ideas, but they weren't doggy people. They had the anointing of God. Amen. The fire of God. Amen. And they had the miracles of God. Amen. We've never had miracles in this charismatic move. We had little old tidbit things. Never did have any miracles in the last 25 the years. Ma the major Y'all hearing me? Yeah. We had little dabs will do you, but my, 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 more people were sick than they was healed. There was no great miracle healing move in the last 25 years. Well, basically, it wasn't what God was doing. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. That was a move of getting people baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now it's a move of holiness. <laughs> la, la, la. Praise God. Y'all still love us? based on obedience to God's Word. Now, obedience restores what disobedience took away. Nehemiah 1, starting with verse 8. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Did that ever happen? Amen. <laughs> I'll tell you, Israel transgressed. God said, You better straighten up or I'm going to scorch you. 
And they just kind of, oh, God wouldn't do that. We're, we're Jerusalem, we're Israel. And, and God cut off the rain a little bit, increased the gasoline price a little bit, put cars up to $20,000, $30,000. You know, not, we can get, we, you know, we can pinch and get by and go ahead and operate. You know, God really wouldn't do that, you know, and keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. You better straighten up, I'll scorch you. You know, if the body of Christ would straighten up right tonight, we wouldn't even have a tribulation. You know where the tribulation comes from? Us. Now, hang loose on that. That might be wrong, but there's, there's basically a truth in that. There's some truth in that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why did Israel have their tribulation? Why did they go into 70 years' captivity? Because their own ornaments and their own sin their own rebellion. God's people would just straighten up. You know, I, uh, Joel 2 talks about this great tribulation, talking about the Babylonian captivity, actually what Joel 2 was, and it's coming down on them, that great army. It was God's Babylon, the Babylonian captivity coming down. And then right in the midst of that, it was prophetic, of course, towards the end time too, because it talks about the moon and the stars and all that stuff. It's prophetic for us. And he said right in the middle, they said, if you repent, just maybe I'll repent. <laughs> Isn't that a mess? God said, if you'll repent, you know, I'm just allowed to change my mind, not burn you near as bad. And you, you say, well, it's prophesied that it's got to be. Well, maybe, but what happened when Jonah prophesied to Nineveh? And the people repented. And they were not destroyed in the... Th in the when he well, said, I got now, news for you. Uh, a hundred years later, they were. I got news for you. The body of Christ is not going to repent. They're too ornery. <laughs> and we will probably have the tribulation period. You understand? Israel didn't repent, and Amen. we're not much better than they are. Amen. But there will be a Daniel bunch. Amen. There will be a Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego bunch that'll walk in the fire, that'll know the name of God. Amen. There will be a people. There is a people coming forth. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I pray and cry out to God for the body of Christ. I pray and cry out for our nation daily. Daily intercede for our nation. I, I pull down this liberalism. I pull down this humanism. I pull down this communism. And it will fall before you and me sooner or later. Amen. It may not be to the millennial reign, but they, they will come down. The Antichrist, the Babylonian system will fall before the church. Amen. But we may have to go through that tribulation first and probably will. You say, oh, that was going to get raptured out. We will get raptured out when God gets ready to rapture us. And whenever that is, I'm going to be the first one. <laughs> you all with me? Everybody out there? Now, if you got it figured out and when it is, let me know. I'll just put that on my ticket joining the other 50 ideas. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. One of you may be right, of course. Go ahead, honey. If you transgress. I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Is the body of Christ scattered today, just like Israel got scattered? Yes, we have sinned. That's exactly why America's in the mess we're in right now. We're in the pre-Babylonian period, pre-Babylonian judgment period. See, it's a picture of history repeating itself. The high price gasoline. You know those characters put that gasoline up, just, uh, just decide to put it up. And you Man. just watch. They always put it up when there's going to be more travel and they can get more money for it. Usually drop it a couple cents just to get you, wow, it's going down and boom, shoot it up a dime. It's the lowest on the market it's been for several months yesterday. Praise God. But, praise uh, uh, lowest. The oil is. Oh, but but right. you, you look at the gas pumps and they're not. <laughs> They went up three cents yesterday. Yeah. See, what we're telling you, we are in that pre-Babylonian Period. If the church was straightened up, you'd have 30 cent gasoline. Honey, why don't we go back to the 19th? Praise God, praise God. Are you all out there? Yes. The church is a bunch of jerks. <laughs> they have laid down and let the devil come in. God's called the enemy in on you. I'm talking about you as the old body of Christ. You're a bunch of sweethearts. You're a bunch of darlings. All right? But, glory to God, He said, I will scatter you yes, because amen. of your rebellion. Amen. The church is the most powerful person in the world. The church is the most powerful people. We are the body of Christ. We are the fullness of yes, Christ. hallelujah. There is nothing we cannot do if we'll walk together in harmony and unity before the Father. Amen. And that people will come forth today. They will, not, they will all agree. 
in spirit. Like Brother Jackie, I agree with his spirit. I bet we could argue over some dumb things. He's so stupid. <laughs> you see, but that is thing. not important. We're united in spirit. Amen. The idea is we want to know what truth is. Amen. We may not have the truth, but I'm hungry for the truth. And I don't care if I don't have it, just so I get it. It don't make any difference what I believe now. I want the truth. Now, that's what we're talking about. Harmony. United in purpose. I am after God. Are you after God? Yes, hallelujah. That's what you're here for. You're after God. I appreciate it, Brother Glenn. That old denominational spirit hadn't gotten on him yet. I'm talking about professionalism. You know, professionalism, denominationalism, Pharisee is all the same thing. You get sort of starchy when you get a little blessed. <laughs> Just plain old sweetheart yet, Brother Glenn. I like that sweetheart spirit, don't you? Praise God, praise God, praise God, oh, praise boy. God. Aren't you tickled about Jesus? Yes, I am. All right, he said, if you don't obey me, I will scatter you. Now, let's keep reading. We're talking about obedience restores what disobedience took away. But, I like these buts here. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then, even if you, your exiled people are in the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. All these things were what? Written Given for our admonition. For my instruction, my admonition, my instruction, my advice. God said, if you will, draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. Then you submit yourself to God and resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Yeah. Are you there? Yes. You come back to me. Yes, Obey amen. Me. Praise then God. I will Hallelujah. gather you, and you'll become oh, one yes, Jesus. in spirit, one in purpose. The body of Christ does not come back one great Man over here gets a great move of God, and he bursts the whole thing. Uh -uh. You little rascals are going to have to repent if we're going to have a move of God. Yeah. Every last one of you little stinkers are going to have to cry out to God for a move of God in your Amen. heart. Amen. Brother, we are one, and we're not going to have any little stinker show-offs around here. It's going to be the body of Christ coming back with the fire of God. You'll never do away with the five ministry offices. They'll always be there to lead you. You understand? But I'll tell you, it's, we're going to be one people. Yeah. Not one in letter of the law, but God, what do you believe about this? Well, shoot, I don't even know what I believe about some stuff myself. <laughs> so what's the difference? I'm hanging loose, trying to find out what truth is. Amen. All right, God said, if you'll obey me, I will draw you back. Amen. Praise God. Now, was that that verse there? That was this one. I'll gather you. Now, verse... Chapter 30, verse 2 and 3 of Deuteronomy. Return to the Lord your God and obey Him with all your heart. How much? With all, all your, your heart. heart. means that God is going to talk to you and tell you to straighten this up. And you just keep right on doing it. <laughs> that is not all your heart. Amen. Now, you know how I know? Because He tells me to do it, and sometimes I don't do it. And Brother Jack said, he's going to keep teaching you till you do learn. You remember you saying that tonight? He's going to keep working on you till you learn. He is long-suffering. He is merciful. I thank God He is. Amen. If He wasn't, I'd be up here without any legs or arms tonight. I mean, He'd just cut them off every once in a while. Cut them off a little more. Cut them off. They're up here on stubs. You little darlings, if it wouldn't be for God's mercy, every one of you would come in here with patches all over you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bleeding and everything else. God's wonderful. He's long-suffering, but He can tan your hide once in a while, too. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. God took I'll... Him 200 years before He finally got around to clobbering Israel completely. That's how long-suffering God is. But I'm going to tell you, there's going to be something happen, I believe, during the, you know, the middle or latter part of the 90s. It's really going to bring a mighty revival. Amen. don't know. It could happen right now. I Return to the Lord your God and obey Him with all your heart. And with all your soul. Then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where He God scattered you. God will restore your land. 
God will restore your yes, your fortunes. What 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 translation is that? I think it was probably uh, something NIV. New we picked that up out of one of those search programs. <laughs> anyway, we just flipped it over here, and it's not King James. I'm used to King James, but that's all right. He will restore my fortunes. What are our fortunes, honey? Well, our our health is one thing. I can handle that. Got an ear. Here, Nate, in this ear. Need one on this one. <laughs> you hearing me, Jack? I hear you. Going to restore it, glory to God. Restore my miracle ministry. Restore the signs and wonders. Restore that walking on the water yes, ministry. Restore, amen. glory Praise to God, God, where you'll walk as in fire like Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Spit out an atomic bomb. Let it hit you and throw it back at them. Brother, you're going to be a people that know God. Amen. The people Praise that God. God's bringing forth in this hour will be a restored people, a holy people, a pure people. Oh, yes. Are you all listening to that? Yes. Is that? Did you get that verse read? We got that one. Obedience. Obedience brings prosperity. Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all His commandments. Notice he keeps putting that in there all the time. Diligent, determined, all the way. And then keep all His commandments. Which I command thee this He just keeps talking about that. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Is the body of Christ sitting on high above all nations of the earth nope, right now? Nope, nope, No, if not even a good tail end. <laughs> I mean, up until a couple of years ago, the, the, the lawyers were almost afraid to sue churches. And now what are they doing? They're just jumping on them. It's, a, it's just a new era, complete, new, new area completely for them. They're excited more than they can sue a church. And they don't just sue one church. They sue everybody that's part of that church. They, they sue the whole denomination just because one church goofs Hey, up. you want to tell, tell you something? The hour is coming. <laughs> Where the church will again be on the head and not the tail. Amen. The church. Amen. See, Israel, once you obeyed God, nobody messed with her. And the church, the real body of Christ, I mean, that, I'm talking about that remnant. When that remnant gets back where they belong, you guys hurry up. I'm getting tired. Get in there and pay the price, you little stinkers. Fight! Come through this mess. Get in there and bring back the holiness of God. Yes, hallelujah. God said, I'll set you on high. Brother, the news media opens their mouth against you, they'll die right with their mouth open. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I like the rest of that verse. Lawyer raised his hand to sue you, and brother, he'll never get it down again. Brother, we're coming back where the fire of God will burn. Destroy yeah. the enemies. Amen. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Now, I'm willing to be made willing. Amen. Explain that, Mother. Well, we, we say we're willing to do something, but we, if we were really willing to do it, we would be doing it. So the best I can do is say, Lord, I am willing to be made willing. That Lord, be gentle with me. That gives him the authority to come in and put that, well, it's the Lord that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure anyway. Now, I'm doing better than I was a year ago. I'm doing pretty good a year ago. I'm never really goofed up a whole lot. That, in the that's, body. that's his side of the story. <laughs> we don't need you anymore, honey. <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. I mean, we, we've done a pretty good job, at average speaking. Follow me? But if you compare us to Jesus, a bunch of jerks. Talking, about, talking primarily about Lillian there. <laughs> praise God, praise God. But you see, God is calling you to come out of your flesh life. You say, well, well, you got a lot of flesh. Everybody's got a lot of flesh. What is flesh? Anything that God didn't tell you to do is flesh. Anything the Holy Spirit didn't order is flesh. He tells you not to eat, and you eat, you are in the flesh. Are you all out there? But on the other side, if He tells you to eat and you don't eat, that's also flesh. <laughs> that's legalism, isn't it? Praise God, praise God. Aren't you all tickled about Jesus? Read on, honey. Obedience 
brings life and prosperity. We just had prosperity, yes. and this is life and prosperity. That sounds nice. Uh -huh. Let's see what it says. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. Now, notice I'm just putting headings on these Scriptures. It's what the Scripture said, so that's what I say. Yeah. What does it say? It brings life and prosperity. The other one said just prosperity. This one says life and prosperity, so that's what I'm telling you it is. See, I set before thee today life and prosperity. Well, now, in that deal, you you got a choice. Death and that's destruction. Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 18. I set before you life and success. Prosperity. What is prosperity? Well, I know Isaiah 53 where he said he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. The word peace there is prosperity. It's also healing. It's also deals with salvation. Interesting, isn't it? Same way with Romans 1, 16. Not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto prosperity, salvation, salvation. Uh, redemption. See, unto salvation. So God's word for salvation is an all-inclusive word. You see, when you get saved, really saved, see, you'll be like Jesus. You'll have to have a treasure to go around to collect the money. Now, you see, I'm just teasing you about that. Jesus didn't have a bunch of money. gave it all away. He always, but he had enough money to give to the poor all the time. And it, he when wasn't he, a pauper. He wasn't a beggar. He never, when, if you ever come up short, what would you say, honey? When he needed the money, he always knew where the fish was. See, you never mess up a Jesus man. He's always got fish money, I mean tax money. <laughs> <laughs> see, you'll never put a man of God in the corner. See, a man of God is like Jesus if he is one with Christ walking in the perfection. I'm talking about perfection now. Walking in the perfection of Jesus Christ. You cannot kill him until God gets ready for him to die. I mean, he is indestructible. You can shoot him and he'll still walk. Unless God wants him to die and then he'll die. Jesus said, no man takes my life from me. I lay it down on myself. That I got power to lay it down, I got power to take it up because God's already told me I could. <laughs> That's the secret. What does God say? Yes. Now, I know old Gary Woods, he was he just bad this fellow, but he died and had a wreck and got, had a wreck and died, went to heaven. God talked to him, said, Go on back here and preach. And anyway, the story of old Gary Woods. You ever hear of him? Uh, no, old Gary. In in the wreck he lost his vocal cords and he couldn't talk. Well, after about six months laying there in the hospital, after he was came back to earth through prayer, uh, you'd think he'd been completely healed. He wasn't. But there he was. And the Lord appeared to him one morning and touched him. And the nurse came in and was, said, How are you, Mr. Woods? And so he said, Fine, thank you. And she nearly fainted. And you know, because he hadn't about, talked for six months. I, I, sure, I saw Gary about six months ago. I said, Run that by again. Do you mean you don't have any vocal cords? He sings, man. He sings like a, sings like a bird. He said, no, he said, I've had several physicians examine me. He said, there are no vocal cords there. See, it's supernatural, just like seeing through the glass eye and stuff like that. How are you all at? Anyway, I didn't really want to tell you about that. The idea I want to tell you, this Episcopalian guy, he got drunk, you know. And old Gary went out to get him saved. And he still, shot still old a Gary. Bit. Shot him right through here, brother. Boom! She, that's a terrible place to get shot right there. That old bullet went clear through him. <laughs> they dug the bullet out of the seat? Oh, Gary said, man, when that went through, he said, like, pow! He said, just like you just slapped me like that. But he said, look down there, and it was a scar there. A little red spot. Right where it went through. Scar, still there. In the same way in the back. No blood. Instant healing. <laughs> you see, yeah, God wants you. See, God can do anything. That drunk sobered up in a hurry. <laughs> God can do anything. Where was that scripture, honey? Right. You hadn't finished it yet, have you? I don't think so. Start again. I, I said before thee today, life and prosperity. Now that's where we went, see? Death and Death and life. What do you want? Death or life? life? You see, the moment you lead to the flesh, you live, lean over to the flesh, you're leaning into death. That's right. Every step you take into flesh, you are into death. Every step you take in spirit, in obedience, you're in life. Simple, isn't it? I mean, this thing of getting back to God is just plain, do it, dummy. <laughs> you all know I'm loving you, don't you? I'm really preaching to myself. But I'm taking it out on you. Glory, glory, glory. Now, my wife's the one that really needs it. 
Thank you, darling. Go ahead. Read on, honey. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways and keep His commands. All right. So I love God. How do I do that, honey? I start by loving Lillian when I ought to sock her good. <laughs> Hold it, honey. Hold it. <laughs> Come on. I love you when I don't like you. I love you when I don't like you. He said, if you don't love your fellow man whom you have seen. What's the rest of it, honey? How in the world can you love God whom you haven't seen? How can you love God? Oh, I love you, Lord. How come you're so mad at this person? How come you hate this person? Oh, no, he said, love the Lord means you love your fellow man also. And if somebody has done you dirty and you can't forgive them, say, God, I'll do the best I can. I'm you, willing to be made right. Work it out, Lord. I, I want you to love them through me. Just keep saying that and you'll start loving them. You must not hold hate in your heart. Amen. You must not have anger in your heart. Amen. Oh, I forgive everybody. And then every once in a while something will come. Lord, I forgive them. By faith, I forgive them. Then I get real close to a problem. <laughs> Boy, that's hard to love right then, isn't it? You ever get real close to a problem you just like to? <laughs> <laughs> Love them by faith. A fellow was giving me fits one time, and I looked, I looked at him, and I said, Man, you have messed everybody up in this community just with dumb stuff like that charismatic guy. And I said, God, I don't even like this guy. Told, told the Lord that didn't tell him But that. I confess I have favor with him, and I confess I love him by faith, and the guy instantly changed. See, when you change, your old enemies are going to change, you sweethearts. Praise God, praise God. Read on, honey. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways and keep His commandments. Then you will live and increase. Did you hear that? You're going to live and you're going to increase. There's going to be a revival that will sweep this world. Yes, It will sweep the Arab countries. Those desert places are going to begin to blossom and bloom. I've been praying for the Arabs for seven years, and they get meaner and meaner. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Uh, you read Isaiah 60, uh, rise and shine, darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness of people. My glory shall arise upon you. <laughs> My, My glory shall be seen upon you. And then to this light will the Gentiles, Gentiles come. will come in and then it lists. You listen to those, you start reading those countries, they were all those Arab countries. Eh, eh, eh. Great move of God among all these Yes, nations. glory. All the Orient is going to see the move of God. All of Africa is going to see a mighty. Of course, they got more of a move of God than we do anyway. Well, I tell you, I went over to Kenya. You couldn't witness to one person that didn't know the gospel. You hear me? Yeah, they might not. To me? They might not believe it, but they at least they have. I heard mean, it. they knew the gospel. Those missionaries got in all those schools and taught them for a, a couple hours a week. They just knew the gospel. Praise God! 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 I want to tell you something, sweethearts. Lily and I've been over to the uh, in the Orient three times. I've been three times last year and a half. She's been there twice. Those people are just like you. They're sitting there just like you are. They want God. There's a hungry people coming alive. There's a body being yes, formed worldwide. If you ask them what they want, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Isn't that your cry tonight? I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Did you ever do this? Uh, God, I really want to be like you, but not really. <laughs> because when you're just like Jesus, that means you're going to have to quit doing this. And this, and when he says eat, okay, eat. When he said don't eat, don't eat, I want to eat now. One hundred percent obedience, you little stinkers. You still loving me? Read on, honey. When you keep his commands, then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. If your hearts turn away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods... Uh oh and what are the other gods? Anything that God didn't ordain. Anything that you're doing that God tells you not to do, 
is another God. Right. Yeah. For some people, it won't be a God. To me, it might. See, God just keeps me in the Word all the time, praying. See, when I study the Word, it's, it's nearly all prayer. I get a verse, worship God, love Him, just love Him. Just spend hours, two or three hours in the, at night. I, every once in a while, I like to go in a little and watch television. You all hear me? Oh, once in a while, God will let me do that, especially during the day at noon. I might watch a program with her at noon and stuff like that. But you know, at night when I get in there, I just get all messed up. <laughs> well, now, if you can enjoy it, go to it. <laughs> but I'm telling you what God's talking to me. Amen. You have to. What is obedience? It's doing what God tells you to do. And quit your horsing around, Amen. coming into holiness. And some of you are so... Oh, no, nobody here. We're talking about the body of Christ. Some of you are so ornery, you don't even know what God says to you. I'm that way a lot, too. I wish sometimes I was sure what God said. If you talk louder, God, then I'd understand a little better. You know, funny thing about God, sometimes you just feel like getting mad with Him a little bit once in a while. You know, you got to... Was that you, God, or not? Well, he kind of lets you guess sometimes. But boy, if he wants you to know something real good, boom! Oh, he can talk loud when he gets ready. <laughs> One time I bought me a, a new car in 83 for the road and then another little puddle jumper for the town. I like those little things for running around town. As soon as I got home with it, I paid for the thing. The Lord says, give it to your son-in-law. Didn't even say give it to our daughter. Well, I didn't even really like him. Are you hearing me? I said, God, I bought this for me. <laughs> well, I finally gave it to him, but it cost me a lot more than that car. Because he'd waited a couple of years before he did it. <laughs> now, you're just telling a big lie there, buddy. <laughs> she told that wrong. What was it, four years? <laughs> no. What happened? I called my daughter in and said, Look, God says give you this car. Well, I don't want it. It's a two-door. Isn't that stupid? Their car was just a bunch of junk, and they didn't want it was a two-door. Boy, now that's what you call a dumb daughter. <laughs> I said, Well, maybe God wants me to help you get a used car and help you get your house. She said, I'll take that. <laughs> I well, mean, getting that house cost ten thousand dollars. Getting the used car cost thirty five hundred dollars. And, and that used car was a lemon with a capital then L. Then keeping it up cost another thousand dollars for a year. Finally, every time I'd come in, it'd be broken down. I'd have to go fix it. She didn't <laughs> have the money to get it fixed. Finally, I said, "Get in here and get this car." <laughs> hey, you old sweethearts. I say, when God wants to, He can talk real loud. But nevertheless, <laughs> He expects you to be so tender that you'll hear His voice in those just gentle speaking of His voice. And that's the type of people, lots of times it'll be wrong what you do. Like, He calls you, the flesh calls you, know, the devil can call you to fast. Don't tell me He can't. The devil can do anything. Somebody says the devil don't tell you to give. He'll tell you to do anything that's ornery. Anything to mess you up. He'll tell you to do it, see? So, you know, you might miss God once in a while, but if you keep being obedient, pretty soon it's going to get clear and clear. Now, this brother here, he knows the voice of God probably better than anybody here. Y'all hearing me? That's how he gets up here and moves in the Spirit like that. Well, that's just normal. Any Jesus man ought to be able to do that. Are you following me? That's just kind of normal. Of course, we realize that's the prophet's mantle. But at the same time, He's knowing how to yield to the voice of God. He couldn't do that. Are you there? Read on now. If your hearts turn away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to our God, other gods and worship them, declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You not. will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. Are. We are in the, in the Holy Ghost Jesus Jordan land, you see. We're in that glory land. Amen. Jesus Christ, the salvation, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we are in the promised land, so to speak. You listen to me? 
And yet, if you disobey God in the promised land, you will not live. You will die. The charismatic move has died. Oh, there's a lot of good churches come out of it, but they're all dead. You know how I know? I'm a traveling minister. And nobody's having too many church services. Yeah, what they're doing now, they're settling down to Sunday morning and Wednesday night. I mean, I talk to these pastors and they all want me to come. But Sunday morning or Sunday, maybe two services, maybe. <laughs> Man, when, when we got this baptism back there in 64, 62, 64, 66, 68, 75, mm-hmm, all that. Man, you had prayer group morning, noon, and night. People was hungry. As soon as they got settled down in churches, they died. That's right. now, I love churches. Don't you misunderstand me. And I uh, think churches were the will of God, really. But I want to tell you something, sweetheart. Don't die. Don't die. Keep getting fired up. That's what this camp means all about. Fire you up. Read on, honey. Obedience brings authority in the I like this one. Obedience brings back your authority and your power. Joel 2.11. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. His forces are beyond number. The mighty are those who obey his command. The day of the Lord is great, it is dreadful, and who can endure it? And we're talking about the, the Lord thunders at the head of his army. His forces are beyond number. And mighty are those that obey his command. The day of the Lord is great and dreadful, who can endure it. Listen to what the only point I want to make there was, mighty are they that obey His commands. Amen. Amen. Brother, that group, that group, don't worry about what that was talking about there. There's always arguments in what that was talking about. Don't make a difference. The Bible says, they that obey His command. That's a fact. The fact is, God was head of that army, and what God said, they obeyed, and that is the key. And that is what God is doing in this hour, yes, teaching amen. you how to Praise hear God. the voice of God and how to obey the voice of God. Amen. And you say, how do I do it? You just do it by doing it. You just straighten up and quit rebelling against God. And I told you this was skin you, this message. See, I really know because God deals with me all the time. I am really hungry to be like Jesus. Aren't you? Amen. I want to obey the Lord. This obedience message, we didn't put it together to preach it, just like our favor message. You all remember that favor message? We, we still preach it once in a while. How many of you have heard me preach the favor message? You read the favor book, Favor the Road to Success. All right, see, that book was just like this message. We didn't put it together to preach it. We put it together to pray those scriptures, bring them alive in our heart. And that's what this message is. It's our own prayer message. We pray these scriptures. Oh, God, this is what I want. I want this in my life. And so we're preaching it to you as we uh, deal with ourselves on it. Don't think this is a message down to you, dog, 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 you dog. This is God dealing with this dog. Okay? And I hope it fits you, you armory things. Because Lillian really needs it. <laughs> We, you mean we've got up there? We got up here. Boy, look at that. Let's see how far have we one gone. One page. One page. We got one, two, three and a half left, and that took us an hour. So three. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. We'll quit here in about five minutes. Okay. Thank God. Obedience brings activates the, the covenant. covenant. Forget it. Obedience brings full deliverance. I like that one from slavery. You and I are in slavery tonight. The church is in slavery to a world system. You're in slavery to your own rebellion and unbelief. Read that scripture. Uh, Exodus 34, Boy, that 11. scripture is mean. Obey what I command you today, and I will drive out before you the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites, and any other ites that get in the way. Whew. You know, it's the funny thing about those heights. You know, God left the five lords of the Philistines plus some heights. <laughs> and he said, I'll leave them there to prove them. Okay, said, what you going to do? He said, as long as they serve me, honey. As long as you serve me, they're not going to give you any trouble. 
But if you don't serve me, <laughs> if you start serving the devil, then just find out what they can do. Remember when Solomon started his messing around? Then God said he stirred, God, the Bible says God stirred up one of his adversaries. <laughs> oh yeah, God is a big God. He don't let you get away with your own dumb stuff. He'll stir up an ike for you. <laughs> Here'll come one of those lust ikes. You say, what is lust? I don't have lust. Lust is anything rebellion against God. Anything that's not of the Holy Spirit is lust. It's one of the most general scripture words read in the Bible, I think. Anything that's not the will of God is lust. Right. She, which you'll find lust in all areas, not just sex right. deal. Absolutely. So I want to tell you something, sweethearts. There's an old light in you called lust. <laughs> Rebellion, stinky old lazy thing. Praise God, praise God. I confess God is skinning us. <laughs> Especially me. Do you want to be like Jesus? Yeah, you do. You, you, you think you do anyway. But it's going to cost a lot. Not really cost, but yes, cost. It isn't something, oh, it's scary and hard. No, no, it's a pleasure to come into the presence of God. Yeah. It just costs your rebellion and your will is all it is. There's no real cost because there's life in Jesus. There's death in the flesh. Right. These old ants will come alive. This fellow called me yesterday. He says, Brother Bruce said, I got saved. And he said, boy, he said, I, well, like you said, four or five days, boom, 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 boom. Boy, just rolling, boy. <laughs> and pretty soon he slowed down. Here come the ites. <laughs> he said, those ites are on me. He didn't call them ites, but he said, they're on me. How can I do this? He said, same thing you did. I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> same thing. That guy would repeat that same telephone call. And he said, it's gone for a few days. Now, here they are again. Well, I said, just draw an eye to God and they'll leave again. See, a lot of deliverance is just straightening up. Yeah. You old sweethearts, don't you worry. I believe everything you teach about deliverance and more, too. <laughs> I don't mean that I know more than you do. I mean, I mean, I believe it all the way. I thank God you're the one that's doing it, though. <laughs> praise God, praise God, Bob, praise God. Bob. The, that relationship, you say, it, it, it costs, and yet it doesn't cost. It's, it's a lot like when, when you start to get married. You, you shiver in your boots when you look at the world. Huh, do I really want to do this, or don't I? But uh, the pleasures of it make it worthwhile. You get a good marriage, you've got, got something good. Amen. So it's the same way with our relationship with the Lord. If you have a good relationship with the Lord... The blessings far outweigh what you've ever left behind. Amen. Now, sweethearts, I'm going to read that scripture I tell you about the five lords of the Philistines. Read it there, honey, Judges. Judges 3, 3 and 4. <laughs> the five rulers of the Philistines, all the Canaanites, the Sidonites, and the Hivites, living in the Lebanon mountains, they were left to test the Israelites to <laughs> see whether they the, would obey. You left them to get the whole set you out and keep you, left, keep you straightened up. Go ahead. That's it. See where they would obey the Lord's command. That's all. God, pray. Read my notes there. They are good. As long as Israel obeyed God, these five kings could not gain victory over Israel. And as they departed from the Lord, these nations would begin to overcome them. When and if they repented, God always raised up a Samson or a Samuel or a David to destroy their enemies. Oh, boy, God is grazing up some Samsons today, man. Thank you. And these Samsons will arise with the fire of God in them. And they will march, march across this land. Yes, There will be an ingathering, probably a greater ingathering than has ever been gathered into the body of Christ. There the fire of God will come back to the body of Christ. Oh, no, we, we, we probably will not take over in this earthly kingdom right away, but there will be an earthly kingdom sooner or later. You say, oh, I got this doctrine. Well, don't worry about your doctrine. Just know it's going to happen. It don't make any difference how it happens. This, 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 the gospel of the church will take over in this earth. Oh, yeah. Sooner or later. Amen. You don't have to worry about doctrines, kingdom doctrines, this doctrine, that doctrine. I just believe it all. Amen. Well, one, one thing about it, it's a lot like a jigsaw puzzle. When you start putting a jigsaw puzzle together, maybe you'll get a beautiful tree and say, I know that tree has to go right here. 
and I know this church steeple has to go up here. And then when you get it all finished, the church steeple is down here, and the tree is up there. Well, we better quit. We've really loved you and enjoyed ministering to you tonight. feel like this is what God's saying. It's what God's saying in this hour. There's something about uh, a traveling ministry. Uh, and you'll notice, too, when you're at home, you're, you sort of preach a little different. When you're traveling, you preach a little different. See, God has a general, a basic message, and uh, He'll get you in that flow. Back in the, in the 60s and the 70s, it was a strong faith message, uh, and, and it was right in God. And our, our faith message, we always kept it in balance pretty good. And, uh, you know, brought a balance, warned people about balance all the way through. We weren't a bunch of idiots. But at the same time, it was a positive faith message. And it's the only thing God would anoint me with. And then I, in, in the midst of that, then the deliverance message. Man, I couldn't get into a place like this without preaching deliverance. You've heard me preach on deliverance, haven't you, Glenn? We just ministered deliverance all the time. And man, it would wear you out. I'd, it was a move of deliverance. You'd preach on deliverance, and then the people line up here at night. And from then on, every time you turned around, it was a line for deliverance. You cast out devils to you as green in the face. Trina, I said, I'm glad it's you. <laughs> and that mantle finally lifted. And people said, I backslid. I didn't backslide. I liked deliverance. It just, I couldn't preach it. I'd try to preach it, and it'd just go out flop. Now, the pastors picked that mantle up and started using it, and then they can do something with it because they're in the local church, and they can handle it better, see? So there's nothing wrong with deliverance. I'm just glad you're doing it. <laughs> praise God, praise God. I got in the church. Man, those boys, uh, those guys spit devils out. I mean, that, that pastor, I never saw a preacher preach on devils like that guy did. I mean, every service, he was casting devils out of the whole congregation. I literally, yeah, they did it. And man, I'd get up there and that fire and that anointing I used to have for deliverance, whoa! Man, it hit, and it went all over that place. And boy, we cast devils out of everybody. You understand? You have to flow with the mantle. But what's God doing tonight? God is emphasizing holiness. Now, we're, by that, we're not talking about Pentecostal holiness, you, the way you comb your hair, the way you wear your dresses. We're dealing with what God says about your life. You have to obey God. And, we're and not, quit worshiping idols. We're not talking about obedience to a man. We're talking about obedience to God. Yeah, we're not dealing with that, this, this submission to a preacher. Are you all hearing me? I mean, God's got His... You have to submit to me if I'm in the Lord, <laughs> or you're going to be in trouble. But you don't have to submit to me, but God. <laughs> don't buy that car. Don't marry that person. <laughs> oh, shut up. See, you're going to have to make your own decision. But I'm talking about the spirit of what I've said tonight. You're going to have to obey the spirit of that. If it's God. You're going to have to be smart enough to figure if it's God or not. <laughs> You're going to have to figure out whether I'm a false prophet or a good one. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, you have a responsibility, you little stickers. Yes, amen. But if God, the preacher God. said this, i got to do it. You had better check out to see if God said that through that preacher. Amen. You still loving me? Yes. This is God's day. Yes, amen. It's a day when God is bringing forth an army. An amen, army of believers. Amen, amen, an army amen. that's going to march across thank this you, land. Lord, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. With the banner of God in their hands. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against them. And then the Redeemer shall come to Zion. The very next verse. Then he said, This is my covenant. Verse 59, Isaiah 59, 21. This is my covenant that I make with him, saith the Lord. My, my spirit that is upon thee and my my, words that I have put in thy shall mouth. Not. Depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed from henceforth and forever. And then the very next chapter 60 of Isaiah, Arise and shine, darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness beam, my glory will rise upon you, and my glory will be seen upon you, and then this great Gentile revival. When? When the enemy comes in like a flood, then the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard. Then the covenant will be enacted where God's yes, words hallelujah. will come right into our mouth. Boom! Of course, the Spirit of that always worked. I have God's Word in my mouth. It's been so ever since God prophesied it. 
But there's always a time when that verse will come fully alive. Amen. Da, 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 da. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Brother, we're coming into that time. Now is the day. That's our now way. is our hour. You cannot wait any longer. You must quit your horsing around. You must quit your playing. Praise you God. must come back and get a hold of the altars of God. That's not any old formal way. I've got to go down to church and pray an hour or two. You get a hold of God wherever it is. Lily and I like to pray an hour every morning. You don't have to. You may have to pray three hours. Then usually after she and I pray together, I used to go in and pray some more. And then that evening I usually pray three or four hours. But that's not, if I'm home, that's not consistent. I don't follow a routine. God do this every day. See, everybody's different. You've got to flow with what you've got. But if you, can just, you better seek God at least five minutes. Y'all still loving me? At, at, at least wave to him. <laughs> I believe everybody here is a born-again Christian. Everybody know you're born again, washed in the blood, gone to heaven, raise your hand. If you know you're born again, yes, washed in the blood, glory to God. You're on the, you're on the redeemed, you're going to heaven, glory hallelujah. to God. I believe every hand up off of that guy over there. Son, you, you got it up or not? Are you born again or just horsing around about it? You really mean that, huh? Does he mean it, Dad? Yeah. Oh, good. Good, <laughs> Rabbi. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God. Every one of you talking tongues? Yeah. How many, many of you higher. talking tongues here? I, on, I want to see higher. if you're talking tongues. Got one that don't. Two that don't. Glory to God. Three. You, oh, you see, Lord. you're going to have to get on fire, boy. Does he talk in tongues? He's lazy about putting his hand up. How about over here? Three of them. Four of them. You got yours up. Three. Honey, you talking? Yeah, she got her hand. I believe everybody here but those three. Boy, everybody's got the Holy Ghost around here. Y'all didn't need anything. <laughs> those three that didn't have their hand up, if you want to, after service, come down. We pray for you. You can get the Holy Ghost. Anybody else? That yeah, anybody that... lied to me about it? Why? You can come down, too. <laughs> Praise God. We are here to love you and bless you. Praise God. We do everything right, man. We're good at it. I changed oil in my car yesterday, and, and I got up here, and it was leaking. <laughs> Left that crazy filter loose. Man, I've been changing my oil for 25 years. That's the first I ever did a dumb thing like that. <laughs> Praise God, praise God, praise God. Do everything right. <laughs> We're going to minister to three or four of you. We're not what you call a prophet. We'll just give you love words. You understand? I want to talk to Brother Harris. He looks semi-backslid here and needs a little help. <laughs> Backslid clear to the front row. <laughs> I'm just going to love him. See, it's just a love word. Ibrakatara, Raborotora, Ombrokosoro, Ombrokosoroto, Ombrokosokora, Ibrakasaka. I'm just saying what God's shown me here, brother. Ombrokosokora. Brother, I'm just trying to figure out what God was trying to tell me. He just showed you me your very powerful arm, see. And you, you've got a powerful, strong anointing on you. For the balance of this service, please play two. Thank you.